Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Truth and it's a babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with and that's exactly what we're gonna do today because today we're gonna check out a few of the new cards from the Price of Power expansion, I was gonna say the Once Upon a Fire part of the Price of Power expansion because it's really really complicated but I already did a video about that so you can check that out if you're interested. But today we're gonna take another look at Syndicate, more importantly the Bounty archetype in our brand new Pirate Bounty deck. So the Pirate Bounty deck is the deck I currently use to go from pro uh, from rank 3 to pro rank and I did so with 19 wins, 4 losses and 1 draw. So very very powerful in today's uh, rather evolving meta so it could be very powerful and I think it's going to remain pretty powerful throughout. It's a heavy control deck that uses the Pirate's Cove ability in combination with a lot of bounty cards. We're going to go through each and every single card in this deck one by one and then we're going to head into a few example matches where I'll try to explain the flow of this deck as much as possible and as well as possible. So if you're not interested in the card specifically, you can head straight to those example matches using the timeline down below. And you can also check out the Play Gwent uh, link in the description down below for a full written deck guide as well. So, without further ado, let's head into the cards. And our first card is actually a card that is brand new. So the Vigilantes, we talked about this in the card review uh, video as well, but starts at 4 power for 4 provisions and whenever you apply a bounty to a unit, you damage that unit by 2. This also works if you reapply it. So I've used this a few times over the course of my matches uh, in that I didn't have a proper damage dealer, but I did have another bounty applying card, which also allows you to bounty another a unit that was already bountied and then just hit it again for two random damage. Well, not random, two uh, targeted damage on that same unit. Killing it in that case. So just basically a very powerful engine card that synergizes very well with your bounty cards. And then of course to generate some coins we have the tax collector in here as well twice of uh, two of them even so four power four provisions and as long as he's on the range row he will gain give you a coin uh, at the end of your turn which is uh, yeah just a basic engine card that uh, provides you with some coin to spend on the remaining turns and then of course we're heading into the bounty card slander is in this deck twice so it gives you three coins and allows you to apply a bounty on an enemy unit and I mean, I should probably explain the concept of bounty as well. So bounty, uh, if you apply a bounty to an enemy unit and then destroy that unit, you gain coins uh, equal to that unit's base power. So it basically allows you to have this sort of cycle where you bounty a unit, destroy it, and then get enough coins back to bounty and destroy your next unit. And that's just a cycle that keeps going, which I'll hopefully be able to show you properly in the example match. Then of course we need damage dealers to be able to kill those bountied units, so the Witch Hunter Executioner does just that for 5 provisions. He starts at 3 power and gives you 2 coins, and for every coin that you spend on this card, you can damage damage an enemy unit that has bounty by one. If that unit does not have bounty, you can still apply some bleeding on that same unit, just in case you don't have any bounty on the board. Then we have Casino Bouncers. There's two um, thinning pairs in this deck just to apply you, uh, well, provide you with a bit of consistency, because that's exactly what we need in this deck. And just the two pairs in total uh, give you enough thinning to be pretty consistent with the gold cards in your deck. But Casino Bouncers start at four power for five provisions both of them are in the deck and he, they allow you to spend one coin and get the other one from the deck if you don't have a coin you can also damage this unit by one to just um, do the same thing that's what insanity means and then of course the other thinning pair are the sewer raiders also for power for five provisions and for them you need to have four coins in the bag uh, to pull the other one from the deck so again a thinning tool that's really handy early on to just get rid of most of the bronze cards in your deck while you're building up some more coins. Then another crime card, the new crime card actually. So Hysteria is a crime card for five provisions that allows you to place a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by three. Or if that unit already has bounty, you damage it by a whopping six instead, which is really, really good because that uh, allows, gives you the flexibility to either apply a bounty and damage it a little bit or damage it hugely if it already has a bounty. Specifically, very handy in case you don't have a damage dealer on the board. And then to round out the damage dealing crime card, 
cards, uh, we also have one payday, so you damage an enemy unit by five and you gain coins equal to the excess damage that you've dealt. So for example, if you hit a four power unit with this payday card, you will get one coin in return because of course that's the remainder from the five damage that you did. Next up is Kurt. Kurt is still a very, very powerful card um, in Syndicate and has both of his uses here in this deck because Kurt's six power for six provisions. And if you deploy him on the melee row, you apply a bounty to a unit. Or if you deploy him on the range row, you can purify a unit, usually used in this deck to get rid of defenders because defenders are the only thing that basically block you from properly dealing damage with bounty. And uh, this just takes care of that. Then we have the damage dealer. So Horson's Freak Show starts at four power and one armor, gives you two coins. And for every two coins you spend on him, uh, well, on them basically, you damage an enemy unit by two of your choice. Seven provisions, but still definitely worth the cost because uh, this uh, card can wreck some... Uh, wreak some havoc on the field because it just wipes out everything on its spot. Combined with bounties, they give you coins back so you can continue to uh, kill a lot of units on the other side of the field. So Graydon. Graydon is probably the MVP of this deck. So only three power, but on deploy, if you put him on the melee row, you can destroy an enemy unit with a bounty regardless of anything else. So as long as you can target that unit so there's no defender in the way, you can destroy it regardless of whether it has shields, armor, whatever. It doesn't really matter. This card destroys it in one go. Um, aside from getting, of course, the coins from the bounty, he also has a tribute ability for five coins that allows you to boost you Graydon himself by the unit's base power. So the unit you destroy, if it has a high base power, it might be useful to use the tribute ability. Uh, but of course, if it's less than five, you have way uh, more efficient ways to spending those five coins if you have them. But just overall really good against something like Cloggers, you can just take out Colgrim at the very end and uh, there's no problem at all as long as you have a bounty and this card left in your hand. And of course we're getting into the stronger and stronger cards but most of these cards are engines so we need to protect our engines and Azar Java does just that. So five power gives you three coins and on the boy spawns a scarab. Scarab has one power and one armor and is a defender. If you spend the three coins that you're getting from him he also spawns another one in the same row. So you have two one power one armor defenders to uh, protect your units. Then our final tutor card, so the Vivaldi Bank, gives you three coins and then allows you to look at the top cards from your deck based on the amount of coins you have. So you look at the top card and then the amount of coins you have uh, dictate how many uh, other cards you can see from the top of your deck. You can choose one. If you don't pick the top card, you have to pay the amount of coins equal to the distance from that top card. So if you take the third card, you'll have to spend two coins to actually get that card. But then you play that card uh, and you shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck. So your deck gets shuffled so you don't have the benefit of seeing what the order of your deck was. But still, this is a very good card to get uh, another card from your deck. So basically giving us three cards to thin the deck with over the course of a match. Then, probably a card that nobody um, expects in a deck like this, but I have included Vinci Bloomerhold because she is amazing in this deck. So she starts at 4 power, which is not a lot, but as long as she's on the range row, preferably, of course, behind Azar Javed, you uh, will... Well, she will boost herself for each coin you gain. So if you, for example, gain five coins because you killed a unit with bounty, she will boost herself by five on top of the fact that you're also getting the coins to do something else with. So Bincy baby, basically, basically, basically allows you to double up on any point uh, coin gains that you get, including bounty gains. So this is really, really powerful in this deck as long as you manage to protect her properly and uh, usually also play her pretty late so she's not as much of a target. Now we have, of course, the few auto include cards that are uh, almost uh, yeah unmissable in these kinds of syndicate decks these days so horson jr five power and as a deployability he will allow you to damage an enemy by six we have devotion so it's any enemy unit while his default ability would allow you only to damage boosted enemy units but we have devotion so we can damage anything of our choice if you have any excess damage you will transfer those into coins as well um, he also has a fee ability for three coins. He allows you to destroy an enemy unit with three power or less. This is another destroy ability. So this is regardless of any status or armor. Um, you can just destroy any unit with three power or less. As long as you have three coins, of course. Then we have Jacques. Um, well, we're, we will be getting Jacques Grandmaster. Again, this is a devotion deck. So six power gives you four coins. Has veil 
And on the uh, deploy, you can choose whether to spend those four coins to gain two Flaming Rose Footmen. The Flaming Rose Footmen have three power and one armor each. So basically giving you a 50% uptake on your coin expenditure. He also has a fee ability that allows you to gain uh, a single point on Shark for every coin that you spend. So just a one-on-one -on -one transfer of those coins. So just basically a very powerful card to include in this deck. And uh, yeah, also almost always an auto include uh, just because the fact that he also gives you a spender it's just a, a really valuable card giving you as a base 12 for 12 but as, uh, on top of that a spender then the final auto include card of course the professor six power he has been nerfed with a single provision uh point so we need to have 12 provisions to include this card now but still has the same ability so on deploy you put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by four if you have vigilantes on the board you will auto well automatically kill a Six power unit with this uh, and if you have the coins you could also ignore armor but usually that's not going to be necessary but still this gives you 14 points as a base and could be even more depending on your previous setup and then the final card in this deck is the Witchfinder, the new legendary card for syndicate starts at seven power and gives you three syndicate crowns which are artifacts that can provide you with a single coin whenever you'd like at the end of her turn aside from of course the seven points and the three coins that she already gives you she has a passive ability where she will apply a bounty to the highest power unit in case there is no bounty on the field just yet um, so this is basically an auto bounty uh, engine which is really really handy just in case you want to always have a target for your damage shields especially in the final round just having this card on the board allows you to always have a target once it's your turn and then you can just focus on spending those coins and killing those units. If you're lacking in coins, you still have those three extra coins because of course these don't take space in your bag. So you could have a full bag of nine coins and then spend three more up to 12 is that. So uh, really, really powerful card and you'll see her in action really really soon our stratagem for this deck is the crystal skull so boost an enemy by uh, an allied unit by four and give it veil basically protecting either the executioner or the vigilantes depending on your card draw and then of course the leader ability is pirate's cove which always gives us a spender which is basically why i chose this leader ability it's really really handy to not have to worry about spenders because the sea jackals will always give you a way to spend your coins usually also very efficiently um, so Pirate's Cove just gives you two of those, um, one for the first round and then of course one for the final round. So this is, uh, yeah, one of the more powerful abilities in Syndicate to my mind. So with that, again, the list is also on the Play Gwent website and the link is in the description down below. You can check it out right there. But, uh, before you do that, you might want to enjoy some example matches. So let's do just that. So our first opponent is going to be Precision Strike Squiatel. I'm actually curious what that is going to be, because I haven't seen a lot of Precision Strike just yet. Uh, and we're still, uh, we're, we're definitely going with the bounties here. Uh, so, mulligan-wise, Sewer Radius needs to be gone. We get the Casino Bounces, which is really good. Other than that, there's a single risk that we get the other Casino Bouncer, but let's try. Okay, we don't get him. That's really good. So we have enough tools to get our full tinning here. So both with the Casino Bouncers and the Sewer Radius, so that's 7 and 8 points respectively. We get the Pyrotechnician. The Pyrotechnician is always annoying. Because he's gonna try and kill our Tax Collector and that's something we really don't want. So let's put Hysteria onto the Pyrotechnician. So once they use that ability now, we're gonna get 3 coins. So we're gonna get the benefit from the ability if our opponent doesn't really want to... Uh, well, if our opponent wants to kill something on our side. Um, we're going to use the, the Casino Bouncer's Insanity ability here. So let's just do this. Giving us the tinning without actually needing to spend any coins. Which is always very, very handy. And we get all Narromancy. That's really quickly. On to Novigradian Justice. They probably want to win that first round. Because decks like these usually tend to have um, Gord at the end. Hand boosting, interesting. Because they already played the Mahakam Volunteers themselves. That is something you don't often see. Um, now, I'm going to put the tax collector down now. At least we get a single coin from that. And that single coin is enough to kill the Pyrotechnician. What is this? You're really going to pass at that point. Okay, so then that means that we can just uh, kill the Pyrotechnician here. 
Um, and then I'm just going to use the sewer radius as a carry over here, so the, the thinning tool. And that is enough. So that's 21, 22. Uh, we got our thinning out. We got our yeah, our everything. I could just put the vigilantes down as well, just to get rid of more uh, bronze cards. There we go. And now we can just pass next round and have a a good hand afterwards. Because that's what the thinning tools are for. You're just basically clearing out most of the annoying bronzes out of your deck, getting some points in return, and then that means that we can pull mostly golds out of our deck from that, that point onwards. Um, I have enough bounties for now, so wanna... Ooh, Hysteria is also good. Let's get rid of the tax collector then we get Azar Chavit. So there's still a lot of gold cards in our deck, which we will be getting in the next round. Now our opponent is going, of course, with the hand boosting. So that's one boost in hand. It's probably going to be another one. They have the option, so why not? Okay, they don't. Never mind. So that's just uh, two more points in hand, meaning that they have four extra points, but we still have two coins in the bag. So that's almost the same type of carryover we get. Slander and Vigilantes. Okay. Um, vigilantes can be good. But right now I have one, two, three, four bounties. So I need damage to this. Uh, which is something that Vigilantes does. Let's get rid of Slander. Payday is... Ah, oh, okay. So that means we still have Professor and... Horses Freak Show in the deck. And Bincy. We still have the Vivaldi Bank as well. And there we have Dunka. Okay. Dunka. Dunka can't be bountied. So let's just put the Vigilantes down first. It's gonna be... Yeah, not that useful, I think. It's probably gonna be destroyed. By a Nature's Rebuke or something like that. Or even by Dunka herself. But if Dunka survives, I should have probably killed it with uh, Horson Jr. Adrenaline Rush. Okay. Um, but of course they know this is a bounty deck. So if I can purify this... That's going to be a lot, isn't it? Yeah, let's purify it. Let's purify it and then we'll play the Witch Finder. Uh, we still have a lot of bounties left. We have one in... Hysteria, and we have one in the Witchfinder. So, at least one in the Witchfinder. The Witchfinder will probably die after the first uh, tick, but still. There we get four. Four is also boosted, so that's one of the uh, carryover thingies. And that's going to go on to not on the Vigilantes. Okay, which means that I can just put the Witchfinder down now. And that's going to automatically bounty Dunka. And also gets hit by two damage because of the veg Vigilantes on the board. So this could be Purify. They definitely have Purify options. But as long as the Witchfinder is on the board, Purifying is useless. And we get Forest Protector. That's gonna be... They didn't play... Yeah, we're definitely gonna get hit with a Precision Strike now. No, we don't. Um... Well then, that's an easy choice then. Uh, I just need to play Graydon onto Dunka now. So that's 11 points goal. And for now that is okay. I, if she survives again, the Witchfinder, I don't think she will. But if she survives again, we can still uh, protect her there. Oh wow. And they keep her alive. But, okay, but I'm gonna... I'm going to bounty Siri after this, because now the Executioner is going to hit... Wait a second, I'm going to go to 5, but I get 5 from the... Yeah, I'm going to put one of the Sea Jackals down, because I'm going to get a coin in excess. I'm going to grab one of the Syndicate Crowns, and then put one in the Sea Jackal. And I can bleed Siri, and then hit the Force Protector. There we go. That gives us... Oh, the first protector was... Oh, yeah, I lose another coin. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. And we can add another bounty on the Siri card there. Yeah, they're gonna try to Nature's Rebuke. What? What are you doing? Are they trying to set up... Oh, are they trying to set up uh, a Shiro? Well, that is... That is just hilarious, isn't it? 
I should have spent the coins first. But yeah, let's uh, pay tribute for that. Uh, kind of wasted a few coins there, but we're gonna get five back regardless. So back to full. Uh, bu -bu I could still bump up the Sea Jackal twice again, so that's back to eight. Because I really don't know why they try to... Oh, I should have bled the uh, the fall off there. It would have died immediately. We get another Nature's Rebuke on those guys, but you have Precision Strike. I don't think this is going to end well for our opponent. There we go. So now we don't have a bounty target anymore, but we might as well just kill fall off. Um, next up is going to be Jacques. Yeah, I almost can't believe myself, but next up is going to be Jacques. So let's spend another Syndicate Crown, put the second Sea Jackal on the front row, and then tap that once again. Um, Jacques gives us four coins, so there we go. Jacques, tribute, both of the Flame Rose footmen down, and we get a bunch of tree powered units. And that's it for now. Yeah, I think we're going to win this one. There we go, they finally decided to kill the... Uh... So that's Isengrim's council, it's gonna be Shiro. Shiro onto four, but that's just gonna take away the Witchfinder and the Vigilantes. I'm presuming. Or you can take down Jacques once more. Ah, Jacques is gonna get hit as well, okay. Fair enough, but that's not gonna... Yeah, okay. Good. For you. Um. Yeah, there we go. We got the, the boss. Could have continued on but that was pretty clear cut okay here we go second match imprisonment Nilfgaard this could be possible but there's a lot of people playing this deck right now because it's one of the most powerful decks in the meta at the moment our hand actually doesn't look that bad I'm gonna get rid of we start here so might as well get rid of Vinci. Hmm. That's another Hysteria card, so that's one, two, three, four bounties. Five, maybe. So we could go really, really aggressively here. I think that might be a good showcase, so let's start off with that and try this out. So, first up, normally we do Tax Collector, but we don't have a Tax Collector, so we'll start with Vigilantes and put the Crystal Skull on that. Because from now on, Vigilantes will just apply two more damage on everything we put a bounty on, so... Yeah, that might hurt the Nilf Guardian. And we get the Slave Hunter first, which means that that is going to be our first target. Because uh, Hysteria is just gonna wipe the floor with that. The Gabai. So thank you very much. So that gives us four coins, which is gonna be plenty to move forward to in this uh, this first run. And I think our opponent already knows that this is not gonna work really well for them. Because of course, Nilfgaard's only tricks right now are locking. And uh, yeah, locking isn't gonna do much in this case. Um, we could apply another bounty here. Or we could just go for the the casino bounties. But let's let's just No. There might be a case that our opponent is just gonna pass after this. So let's just put the casino bounces down first to get the thinning out of the way. Because I'm assuming our opponent is gonna pass after the third card because starting with a crystal skull unlike a vigilantes or even the executioner as well is so strong that more often than not the first round is just forfeited by your opponent um, because it just gives you such a strong base such a powerful control base that your uh, opponent needs to bypass and if they don't have an answer to this then they most likely will pass and just move into the next round Okay, we get a 12 pound, a 12 pound, a 12 point um, seditious aristocrat there. That is, well, something, I suppose. Um, we could apply a bounty now. Uh, why not? It's going to take out um, four more, well, two more damage on top of it, and we... We're still seven points ahead, and if our opponent now passes, then we still have a nice batch of coins left for the remainder of the match. And there we go, there we have the pass, um, which was to be, ex to be expected, so let's pass ourselves, there's no need for us to play any further. And we have three coins for the next round. I think in the next round I'm going to really 
really push hard. Uh, Nilfgaard definitely benefits from longer rounds with all the status effects going around. So we really want to push this hard so we can get the upper hand. We get another bounty. We have the Witchfinder, we have Azar Javed, we have an Executioner and still have Horsens Freak Show as well. So I think I'm going to kick the Executioner in favor of Vivaldi Bank. I could even kick Graydon if I wanted to. But yeah, let's just finish redrawing with this. And see how far we can get. So let's do Azar Javed on the front row and just push this really hard. Let's grab those and continue on. So the two scarabs will defend our units coming up. Uh, especially the, uh, the the witch finder is going to be really powerful if we can keep her alive for a few uh, a few rounds. So we get the slave hunter first. I should probably hit that with the Professor, so it can't destroy a single Scarab, because it doesn't look like our opponent has a good way of dealing with the Scarabs. So, um, Professor, down. We're going to be really aggressive, as I said. I'm going to just hammer down on those cards and not leave a, an available target for our opponent to hit. The opponent is deciding to go with Gorder Gvade. Spawning a, a Viper Witcher that just applies bleeding and we don't get extra thinning there. Uh, well, they don't drop a, a Scarab in our deck because they are not at Adrenaline 6 just yet. Uh, so 7 to 8. Let's put the Witchfinder down. That one Scarab is going to go down, but that's going to at least give us two extra bounties. Because our opponent still needs to take out that, uh, that Witchfinder there. So I don't think they'll be able to do anything against that. So we got locked on one of them and then we got banished on the... Okay, so that's the way we're going to play this. Um, let's put Horson's Freak Show down now. We can hit the Viper Witcher and kill it and get our full bank back. Uh, at this point I'm also going to put down a Sea Jackal since we're at 9 coins. And just double tap this bad boy. So 25-0, which is already pretty good, but I'm aching for more. Get Joachim the Vet. He's gonna pull a big card from the deck. It's Menno Kuhorn going into another tactic card. And that is Coup de Grasse onto Joachim. That was really lucky, holy hell. That was extremely lucky. Obscenely lucky even. Yeah, so that's the first poison on the Sea Jackal. I'm actually fine with that so that's 23 28 i want to keep those three coins we have poison now on our units uh we still have two more bounties but we don't have a way of dealing with the um the aftermath let's start with slander then slander on the van morlehan's cup bearer basically tagging uh, a unit for ourselves to destroy as well they probably have another poison, but I really want to push that uh, Masquerade Ball out now. And there we get the Bratons. Bratons is gonna boost. Well, put the Emissary down. And give Bratons itself another boost. Okay. Then I think... Since we're gonna get 5 coins if we destroy the Cup Bear, might as well use them on Graydon as well. The cards that I still have left... Could be helpful in regards to removing the poison on the Sea Jackal. But for now I think we're okay. Because the Sea Jackal will remove 10 points. But we, with this, uh, gain about 19. Which is a lot. There we go. And that brings us back up to 8 coins. Uh, so that's 37.22 right now. Now we got the Duchess Informant. The only card that they can take is a Sea Jackal. So that's not really useful now, is it? They get um, an Assimilate trigger on Bratons, but that's basically it. They will have a good way of hmm, taking out the Sea Jackal here. If I can remove the poison, I can tap it once, but it's a really, really tricky play here. Um, so there's two ways to go about this. Either I go all the way, which I think is what I'm going to do. Uh, so let's just put the second Sea Jackal up front, tap it once, 
then use Vivaldi Bank. And with Vivaldi Bank, we get Kurtz. Or, alternatively, Horson Jr. Which I think is gonna be better. Although, denying those 10 points, yeah, let's put Kurt down. Kurt, and he's gonna purify the Sea Jackal over there. Um, and then I can tap the Sea Jackal again and just get those three coins. And we get, there we go, the push actually worked. I think that was a forfeit from, wait a second, oh no. That was my timer running out. I thought our opponent forfeited. When the cards disappear like that, it's usually because our opponent forfeits. Um, so I don't have a good target for Hysteria. So the only other option is just to go with it completely. So Syndicate Crown, Sea Jackal over here, Jacques in the back, and just trigger his tribute ability. Um, and then I'm going to grab the last Syndicate Crown, giving us three coins at the very end, if possible. Okay, there we go. And uh, was preemptively celebrating there. So now one of our rows is also completely filled. So if the Usurper is coming up, then they will not have a space for one of those upgrade thingies. And that's an emissary boosting. Yeah, okay. So I don't have a use for that final Hysteria card. It's only three points. I could also use that momentum to put... A few more coins on my other units, which is probably the best way to go. There's only two more cards. I'm 27 points ahead. It's going to be 36 points ahead after this, so I would be really surprised if our opponent can just circumvent all of that in one go. So, let's play Hysteria. Um, doesn't really matter where. It doesn't do anything anymore. Um, and then tap the Sea Jackal once, and then... Quadruple tap shock. 36 points ahead. And Usurper is less effective now. So we get that. We get Kantarella, giving them three coins and four options to pull cards from. That's also going to count as an Assimilate Trigger, because that, that's a card that's not in their starting deck. But that gave us another point. Same with Roderick. Roderick is also going to give us two more points. So for now, it's good. And we got Wilhelm. <laughs> Why? Okay, that completely blocked. Oh, and that's gonna create a... A fight fragmentor? No, a hunting pack. Okay, so that's nine more points. And then the Usurper is completely useless. Okay, there we go. The push actually worked rather well, which is nice. Actually got the remaining coins on the uh, Sea Jackal there, but uh, there we go. That's uh, hopefully enough to show you how powerful this deck can be. So, there's a few things that you can do with this deck if there are cards that you are not interested in. So for example, you could remove Bincy um, as a 10 provision card, because it might not be to your liking. And then, for example, swap it out together with the Payday for something like, I should be looking for it here, uh, Hammond at the first place, because he's a pirate. He can also move another unit, which is going to be come in handy if you're facing uh, Keltella's deck. Uh, and then for the 7 provision uh, cost card, then I would go with Tavern Brawl, since you have another high value targeted with uh, this crime card. Uh, Bincy is just a, a bit of flavor that I'd like to add to this deck. Um, there's also other 8 uh, provision cards you can use. If you want to go full bounty, of course, you also have uh, Caleb Menge, where is he? There he is. So Caleb Menge allows you to place a bounty on an enemy unit for uh, 3 coins every single turn, as long as you have the coins for it. So it could enable you to continue placing bounties, but I think we have enough bounties in the deck as is. Um, and yeah, there's just a, a bunch of other cards you can play with. Because you could even just straight up replace Bincy with the classic Philippa Eilhart to just have a way of transforming your coins into a seized unit, which is always uh, very, very nice. But with that said, it's going to be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed this little deck guide on the Pirates Bounty deck. And I promise the next deck guide is definitely going to be the Spellfire deck. So, uh, Keep your eyes out for that one. It's going to definitely be the deck guide for next week. So uh, with that said, thank you guys enormously for watching. Remember to check out the Play Gwent link in the description down below and upvote the deck there as well. And you can review the entire deck guide written out on that page as well. So thank you guys 
enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentech. Goodbye, and stay nutty.